So um, we have some special guests this evening. Um, uh, Kimberly Freeman is here, and she uh, has, along with her, River Bluff High School social studies teacher, Lindsay Dooley, to uh, talk about the uh, pizza and policy legislative night. Thank you so much, Dr. Little, Madam Chair, members of the board. We're excited to be here tonight. I'm excited to have Lindsay with us. Um, we, we started trying to figure out how to list Lindsay's title on, on our agenda for tonight, and it got a little unwieldy. So she is a social studies teacher, but she also is um, one of our teacher leaders um, on our TLC. She leads our professional advocacy working group and also is a, uh, a teacher in the Center for Law and Global Policy at River Bluff all of which bring her here tonight with me. So we're excited to be here and share with you an update from Pizza and Policy, as many of you were able to be there. Yeah, thank you so much for having us and giving us the opportunity to share. So um, we had uh, Hell Pizza and Policy, and we had six members of the Lexington County Legislative Delegation that were in attendance. Uh, you can see the list up there on your screen. Those names that have an asterisk beside them also participated in our Legislators in Lexington One event, which we held in the fall. Um, and Senator Sheely and Representative Forrest also participated in that event, but were not able to make it to the Pizza and Policy event. Uh, we also had uh, Mayor Kaysen from Gilbert. We had Kathy Manis, who I believe I saw in the crowd here. Uh, and we also had approximately 100 members of the Lexington One community to include uh, teachers, administrators, students, and a number of you board members as well. So Dr. Guyton and Mr. Anderson and Ms. Green and Ms. Smith and Ms. Garris were all able to attend, I think, Dr. Powers had like a last minute emergency saving lives and whatnot. Um, so <laughs> that that matters too. Uh, so we had a great turnout. Saving employees, not lives. <laughs> <laughs> and we did have to use our, our teacher voice just a little bit with Representative Forrest, who was very sick but still wanted to come. Yeah. And we had to make sure and explain to him that we actually didn't want him to come if he was very sick so that all of those teachers there could be at school the next day. Yeah. So um, he was sad to be away. So when we got ready for this evening, we sent out a, a RSVP form to all of our teachers across the district. And as a part of RSVPing, we asked them to highlight specific pieces of education policy that they would like to discuss on this evening. And then we went through and sorted all that out and looked for patterns and trends. And the four that really rose to the top, actually without a lot of competition, um, that we were able to spend some time discussing that evening were class size, which was far and away mentioned more than anything else um, through the RSVP, teacher recruitment and retention, and we had several folks who specifically said, can we talk about this beyond pay, not instead of, but beyond teacher pay, um, a flexible school start date, um, which as you know has been a part of our, our legislative um, conversation already quite a bit this year, and then mental health support for students and educators. So those of you um, who had the opportunity to be with us know that we discussed those through a structured protocol. We're trying to find that right balance of enough time to have a healthy discussion and all of the topics that people want to discuss. And we know we're not quite there yet, but we continue to work on that in this event. Um, but we also thought it was important to end the evening just taking a moment to remind ourselves of why the work that we do is important, both as educators and as legislators and elected officials. Um, and so that's always a, a great part of that time together to really celebrate the importance of the work. So we spent some time walking through those four things during the evening. So these are just a few pictures from the evening. I'm not sure they really capture the level of discussion and engagement that was truly taking place. Um, as we were walking around, we heard some great conversations um, kind of on on um, all sides of, of the table there from all different perspectives. So uh, we just wanted to kind of present some um, images there for those that couldn't attend to see um, really kind of what was happening. And you can see at different tables, you have some tables where um, the legislative leaders were there, uh, and um, each of the tables had a table leader and a table facilitator um, that was kind of uh, walking around with them so that they could really focus on the discussion, and they had somebody who was there taking notes for them, um, and they rotated around to different tables to be able to engage with, with different um, individuals. Uh, so at the end of the evening, what we had them do was we had them complete an exit ticket, uh, which we love to have students do, so we thought we would have the adults in the room do it as well. Uh, and we did it in the form of a scattergram. So everybody in the room was given three um, stickers, and there were posters hanging on the wall, and the posters 
uh, were given titles based on the 10 most commonly submitted topics on the RSVP form that, um, that teachers uh, submitted. So we had those up on the wall and everybody was given three stickers and they could place those three stickers however they wanted to. So they could divide them up across three different topics or they could put all three of them on one topic if they felt really passionately about that topic. Uh, so this is just kind of a snapshot of a couple of the uh, posters that were up on the wall. And then the next slide that Kimberly's gonna take you through gives you the breakdown. So as we step back and counted those dots, um, this is what we sort of walked away with. So you see these, these are our 10 topics on the right and they're listed in order um, of the number of dots represented that evening. And it was important for me kind of in looking at, looking at this to remember all 10 of these were really important to folks. They wouldn't have been on the wall if they weren't. But when we look at when you boil it all down to you have three dots. These were the things that rose as being the most commonly marked that evening. Um, interestingly, class size and teacher support staff pay had the exact same number of dots on each. I, I believe it was 61, but I'm not certain about that number. And then from there, we saw mental health support structures, fully funding education and recruitment and retention, um, and that flexible start date also referenced quite a bit. And so we saw that throughout the night. Um, and so that was, those were our takeaways from that. The irony of it is 75% of it. So those top four is 75% of that pie, and it's all related to funding by the state legislature. I mean, all that's tied back to... And some of them funding. even sort of live in tension with each other, which is another thing that's, you know, yeah. that's just... It, is. it really points to the importance of that funding. Well, it was interesting to me, and I don't want to interrupt, but um, I was standing at... After the teachers had put their dots on, and anyway, almost everybody was gone, I was standing in a conversation with Senator Massey and uh, Representative Caskey, and they were astonished that teachers were more concerned about class size than retirement. I mean, they're like, don't they know how much retirement costs? And so I think there's just such a, a failure to communicate. Um, it was just very interesting to me that they were just flabbergasted that teachers were not concerned about the retirement. But I think the mindset is teachers are thinking about students and what's best in the classroom, and the legislators are thinking about bigger issues than that. So I thought that was very interesting. And this picture has just been really interesting. We did a similar exit ticket last year at the end of the event, and I have heard Representative Calhoun talk about these posters numerous mm -hmm. times across this year and how powerful it was for her to see some things specifically uh, mark that way because of the visual that it leaves. So this has, has felt like something that has really landed on our delegation and something they've come back to throughout the year. So this is just a quote from one of the participants that we had, and we uh, have been gathering a ton of feedback from um, all the participants, from the educators and the policymakers. Uh, but what we have routinely heard um, from teachers who attended was that they really felt like it was a great opportunity for them to speak and to really be heard. Um, a, a number of teachers, I think, feel nervous sometimes trying to advocate and kind of express themselves in that way. Um, but I think the protocol-based discussion and the using the topics that the teachers themselves submitted really kind of helped with that. So over and over, we've gotten positive feedback. We've also gotten some great constructive feedback that we're going to continue to take to uh, continue to grow and improve the event. We've already got our date picked for next year and, and we're, <laughs> we're going to keep rocking and rolling with that. But we're also seeing some responsiveness from the policymakers, especially at the State House. Last week, Senator Setzler mentioned it on the Senate floor. Um, Senator Cromer has also mentioned it in some emails with some of his constituents. Um, he has kind of talked about some of the issues and referenced having discussions with educators at the pizza and policy event. So um, I think that this quote and what teachers really felt that evening is hopefully very real and that the policymakers really are, are listening and kind of responding to some of the things that they were able to hear during the course of that evening. Thank you all very much for your time. Oh, thank you. I, I just want to share, I think, my greatest takeaway that night that I, I was pretty flabbergasted was the, the, the mental health support for students, but them also asking for mental health support for themselves and talking about how uh, they see issues in their classrooms that they aren't 100% sure how to handle and they need training. And then also they just, 
they'd like for somebody to hold their hand occasionally and kind of walk them through some things. So that was most of the mental health conversation at my table as well was mine, teachers, not students. Too. Yeah, I wouldn't, yeah. and I had no idea that that I was just looking at it through a student lens. Mm -hmm. But I want to thank you, ladies. That I know that's the second time that I've been and. It's a wonderful night, and it is so diverse because most of the tables are K-5, second grade, music, high school. And so it's so interesting when you ask these questions and you get the response from all these different backgrounds. It's just fascinating, and I, and I feel like it only makes us better board members. So it thank was you. the most informative thing that I have done since I've been on this board. It was very, mm -hmm. very eye-opening. It was Great, you did a great job with it. Look forward to next year. Yeah, I guess sort of two takeaways I had. One, so in here we talk about, you know, very much this sort of top down approach, big picture, system commitments, you know, different, which, you know, are, are of utmost importance. It was nice to hear things at the granular level. Um, and, you know, even, you know, Dr. Lowe and myself have had some conversations about. You know, for example, I, I lead up medical billing in my practice. And so, um, you know, to hear a speech therapist say, well, I spend so much time doing billing that if I could get that away to some degree and have more time to spend with the students. Mm -hmm. And so, we, you know, it, it allows us to kind of, I, I guess as board members, kind of use some of the, the community expertise or business expertise, whatever it may be, um, to, uh, to lend a little bit of a voice there. I think the... Um, Really, the, the, the second thing um, was getting back to your point earlier about the, the pay. So the way the, 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 the question was structured, you know, in addition to, or above and beyond pay, what is it? Well, I kind of broke rules a little bit. And I said, all right, give me a number. What's the number? Where should, where should teachers start? What's the number? And they had a very difficult time coming up with a number. It's because... Finance is typically run second. You know, it's it's going to be more about the the mission and and the difference and you know the, the the things they get to do on the relationship level. That it's very hard to ascribe a number to that. And so when you really kind of press them on it, it's it's, it's almost like it's it's almost like a paralysis. Um, and so that was you know, it's um, we obviously you know we want teachers to be able to advocate for themselves for pay, but. You know, it's also it's nice to see people who are so committed to to the mission of their profession. So, yeah, I just want to say I enjoyed it too. I enjoyed it a lot last year, and like Mr. Anderson said, you really get a lot out of that. Um, and y'all mentioned the legislators going into the schools for the day. I would like to see that implemented across the board. Um, I mean, we can take away so much from that one night, but. Just in board visits, you know, you just get a little bit here and a little bit there. But if y'all could stick us in the classrooms for a day, I think that would be a great takeaway. Um, and class size was the number one thing. I know we got some reports last month. I put some numbers together, and I'll give those to the rest of the board afterwards um, because I think you'd be kind of shocked to see our class sizes. Thank y'all. I do want to say the uh, teacher leadership councils where this whole thing started. Uh, where we made a lot of changes with the Teacher Leadership Council. So thank you, Lindsay, for uh, taking this effort and for Kimberly for uh, leading that council. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's give them a round of applause because that was a lot of work to put all that together.